I've been going back and forth as to whether I felt it was a good idea to make this video, but I think that where we're at now, the state of the world, what's going on everywhere, the situation the majority of us are in globally, I think it is necessary. Today I wanted to address the COVID-19 pandemic we are all facing right now and sort of discuss the importance of coming together as a community to firstly stay at home and not go out and socialize as well as the importance of preparing ahead because I know that if you're watching this video odds are you keep pets and if you have pets it sort of makes this whole situation a lot more complicated. The reason being is that well, you're not only worrying about your human family and yourself, you're worrying about your pet family here. And so as things potentially get more and more strict as far as where we can travel, what stores and businesses remain open, it is incredibly important that you are preemptively planning ahead to ensure that you not only have the supplies necessary to keep your pets healthy and happy and well fed, but that you also have plans set in place or in motion should you potentially get the virus and become ill because you may not be in a position to take care of those animals should you get ill. Now I'm gonna leave it at that because there are worse things that could happen, but we're gonna be optimistic here. Now I'm not trying to scare anybody. That's again one of the reasons why I didn't wanna make this because I was worried people would think it's a sensational video. I hope you can tell from my tone, from my sincerity that it's not. Um, I just want everybody to have the opportunity to be well informed. There are other YouTubers that have taken the time to make a similar style video and I'm grateful for that myself. I also think that it's important that other pet YouTubers choose to use their platform to also reach out to our audiences and express the importance of preparedness in the event things get worse. We've seen it, some countries are in full lockdown. I have relatives in Europe that can't even go out without being asked where they're going or presenting a form or a document. It's getting real. Speaking personally, a lot of businesses are closing in Ontario, Canada. Pet stores are still allowed to operate in modified curbside sales, so we don't know how long that's going to go on for. So the first thing I want to discuss is food you should preemptively prepare for the worst case scenario being that pet stores are closed and you no longer can acquire live food or dry food. So if you have pets that eat dry food and the expiration date is like an, a year ahead, buy an extra bag. Buy something that's gonna last you for a few months so that you're good for a while. If your animals eat live food, that's where it gets more complicated, but there are alternatives. The first thing I'm gonna say is that there are several species of feeder insect that are relatively easy to reproduce in captivity. The first that comes to mind would be cockroaches. Now, unfortunately for myself, I'm Canadian, which means that these animals are, for the most part, illegal to keep, but there are alternatives to that. Several beetle larvae are super easy to reproduce. You can almost do it with your eyes closed. And those would be the superworms and mealworms. Very easy animals to reproduce. Get them going as soon as possible and you should have a pretty well self-sustaining colony to keep you going through the months ahead should you be unable to acquire these prey items through your local businesses. Another alternative, if this doesn't work or if you wanna moderate how much of the live prey you're offering so it lasts longer, would be some dry products, such as the Rapashi Grub Pie, which is derived primarily of pulverized black soldier flies, which have a very good phosphorus to calcium ratio, high protein content. It's a mix that can be added to boiling water to create a gelatinous sort of pie, I guess, that you can cut up into squares, keep refrigerated or frozen, and offer as needed. Animals may be a little, you know, tricky to get receptive at first, but if you dangle them with tongs, I found most of my animals will take it readily. So stocking up on that is gonna last you a long time if you can't get live food, something to consider. If you keep frogs and other animals, start preemptively buying or making dry formula in case the ingredients necessary or products are not as available when people start buying all the, you know, potato starch or potato flakes from the grocery store to stock up on dry foods. Just keep these sort of things in mind going into the weeks ahead because we really don't know how bad things are going to get. 
Another thing, I can't stress enough the importance of having a game plan. If you get sick, you need to have someone that you can call upon to either take on your animals if the worst case scenario happens, or at least come take care of them. Especially if you're keeping exotics, not everyone is able to take care of a tarantula for you. Not everyone is willing to feed mice to your snake. Have a backup plan. You could be bedridden, you know, you don't know. But the most important thing is stay at home, self-distance, do it for the community, we have to flatten the curve. By now you've probably all informed yourselves well as to how the virus functions. I'm gonna link Clint's video up above if you wanna check it out. He has a really great video explaining the virus and similar things to what I'm discussing. But I wanted to take a moment to talk about this issue here so that you guys can preemptively plan what you need to do with this virus in the context of pet keeping because it wouldn't be fair to just turn a blind eye to the community and prepare myself. I just want you to know that these are the steps I've taken. I've bought in some grub pie. I've taken the time to stock up on superworms and mealworms. I am preemptively making sure that I have a few containers of fruit fly culture media that I can feed my frogs for the coming few months. And I am making sure that I self isolate. I'm not going to all my friends' houses. I'm staying at home. I'm, you know, going out to get groceries when I need to, but we're all in the same boat. I too feel lonely. I wanna see my friends. I wanna be out and about, but the bigger cause, the most important thing is getting through this together as a community. We have to come together, we have to work together if we're to flatten this curve and make sure that our medical systems don't get overwhelmed. So this is the reality we're in now. We can support each other as a community and we have to be so grateful for technology because technology allows us to stay in touch with one another. It allows you to post that TikTok. It allows you to Zoom, Skype, FaceTime your family so that although you're physically not there, you're still there. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be in touch with my family that lives in Austria, in Belgium and these are some of the places that are truly suffering from the virus right now my friends in the state some of you even follow them on YouTube I'm grateful to be able to be in touch with them to support one another through this because it takes an emotional and mental toll and that's okay you're not alone if you feel that way we're all in that same boat we're all feeling the repercussions of what this virus has done to us as a species as humanity but the most important thing to say is that we will get through this no matter what happens we will and that's not some mumbo jumbo we are the amazing thing about humanity is that no matter what happens we come together and as devastating as this terrible virus has been so far the one thing I can see as some form of silver lining is the coming togetherness that this has brought in. I'm seeing a lot of unification of different communities and governments in my own town, people coming together to support one another if they need food, if they want someone to do groceries for them because they can't get out and do so safely, for the vulnerable communities, the elderly, people coming forward and helping them get their groceries. And that's a beautiful thing to see. This is bringing people together in a testing time. And I hope that these are qualities and activities that won't stop going forward when we get out of this, when we get over this. I've used this analogy in the past, but I've always said that it's only through tests that we grow. And I always use that, my cheesy plant analogy, right? When you grow a plant in outer space, it grows flat and weak against the ground because it's not being tested by gravity. The gravity forces it to grow more slowly and develop a stronger structure so it can resist and keep itself rigid and straight as it grows. When it doesn't have those tests, it can't go strong. So despite the strife, the loss of life, and the tribulations this virus brings, it is also important to see the silver lining that we are coming together and we are more unified than ever through this 
terrible, devastating time. But please do know that you, your families, you're all in my thoughts and prayers. And I truly do want us to get through this all together. And um, I think I'm going to try and start doing live streams more often so that if you guys are home bored and don't have anything better to do, we can like chat or, uh, you know, kind of jump on that bandwagon of everybody doing that. I think Pingu maybe agrees, don't you? But yeah, like we have to do our part to support one another. So I guess I'll kind of leave it at that because I'm kind of rambling. But the main thing I wanted to say is please preemptively plan for what this virus could do to your current living situation. Of course, it has already affected your ability to socialize and go out and lead your normal routine. But it could be more complicated than that keeping pets so without further ado i'm gonna leave it at that guys thank you so much for watching and i hope you were able to carry something away from this let me know in the comment section down below if you have any suggestions you want to add to this that people can learn from and we'll definitely stay in touch and i will do my best to continue filming for you all to have something to watch also pingu says hi all right guys take care much love Stay healthy, stay safe, stay at home, talk to you soon, and as always, I look forward to seeing you in another video again soon.